Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank it's all right to give God some praise. It's all right to give God some praise. If the Lord has done anything for you, if the Lord has done anything for you, give him some praise. God has truly been good to us. I don't know about you, but God has truly been good to Tony. What has God done for you that you are yet to praise him for? You know he's been good to you. You know that he's done things for you that no one else could do. You tried it. You asked them, and they couldn't help you. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. It is a great day to be in the house of the Lord. God's Holy Spirit is in the place. And we need to glorify God in this body that he gave us. Yes, he is seated on the throne of your life, of your heart. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. It is a good day, ladies and gentlemen, to be in the house of the Lord. With all that's going on in the world today, God has a place for us to come, to be encouraged, to be inspired, to lift up our hands and praise him in the midst of the storm the circumstances and the situations that we are dealing with today. My wife was a little behind coming in today, so I texted her because I was concerned. When she got in, she told me, you know, our, my sister-in-law has been in the hospital dealing with cancer. And my wife was tardy because the doctors had shared with my sister-in-law last night that there was nothing else they could do. But I serve a God. So I bring this before the church today that you will talk to the Lord, that you will have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Pray for Donna and Denise that the Lord will comfort them. When the doctors say it's it, I know for myself, and many of you know, that that's when God really shows up and does his thing. Is there a witness in the house? Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I'm talking about our God. I'm talking about a good God. I'm talking about a God who knows, who heals. I want to talk to you today from the thought. Is, is the power on in God's house? Is the power on in God's house? Concerning your physical home, if I was to ask you, is the power connected to your home? Your answer would be yes. If I were to ask you, is the power on you would probably say yes. But concerning God's house, not this building, concerning God's house is the power on. Are you connected? Are you in fellowship with him? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20 shares these words with us. Or do you not know 
that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God. You, me, we are not our own. Verse 20 says, for you were brought with a price. He says, therefore, since you were brought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. How, ladies and gentlemen, did your body become the temple the house of the Holy Spirit. Well, first Peter shares these words with us. In verse 18 and 19, he says, knowing that you were not redeemed, you were not brought back. See, you were not brought back. We were in bondage to sin, you and I were. See, but you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold. It's not that the silver and gold is bad, but it's too going to pass away. From your aimless conduct received by the traditions of your fathers, the Word of God says. But you were brought, you and I, we were brought, Lord have mercy, with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. In the Old Testament, every once a year, the high priest, the priest would go into the Holy of Holies and offer a sacrifice. What Jesus Christ did was once and for all. Your body, your body is the temple of the living God, the Holy Spirit, the power of God dwells within you. He is the enabler, the one who can enable you to do what you would not normally be able to do for yourself. And because he's in you, because he's in you. Because the Holy Spirit is in you, all things are possible if you believe. Because it is him who's doing the work through you. That's how you, me, we glorify ourselves in this body. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that God is doing a mighty work. He's doing a mighty work in places that you can't see. But for the individuals that God is working in and through, you know there's a mighty work being done. You see, in all of our lives, God is doing something. God is doing something in my life. He has taken me from education to revelation. I'm talking about the Word of God. I'm talking about God is speaking through me to you today to do something with the power that he has given to you. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's the power on in God's house. The Word of God shares with us in John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus said, you can do no thing without me. What are you trying to do without the power of the Holy Spirit? You see, there's a battle going on today within you, your flesh against the Spirit. The Apostle Paul talks to us about this in Romans. Turn with me to Romans, ladies and gentlemen. Chapter 8. 
Lord, have mercy. Nobody can tell me that God is not real. I had an experience with him and studying the word of God. Lord, have mercy. I'm reading, I'm studying, I'm educated. But God said, put the pencil and paper down. Let me speak through you. Ladies and gentlemen, God is about to do a mighty work. I want you to understand something, that the Holy Spirit in you is the power. It's the power of God. He is real. Lord, have mercy. And if we stop playing with him, picking him up from time to time, you see, if we would walk in the spirit, conduct ourselves, move the way God wants us to move, I tell you, your life, your life will manifest the life of Christ through you, will manifest, ladies and gentlemen, and you will see yourself the way God sees you. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? The Apostle Paul said a few words to us in, actually, let's look at chapter 7. As he talked about being free from the law. And Paul shared some things with us, the struggle that he was having, the same struggle that you and I have every single day. And we know that the Holy Spirit is in Paul, was in Paul, he's in you. The same Holy Spirit. We talk about Paul, we talk about Peter, we talk about all the individuals in the Word of God. And we talk about how such great things that they have done. But the Word of God tells me that these things were written for our example. You see, this is what he can do and more through you. Jesus is the one who said, greater things will you do, greater that you will do. Lord, have mercy, Jesus is the power on in God's house. Is the power on in God's house. Your body is the temple of the living God. Is the power on? Are you walking around bumping into everything because you choose to walk in the darkness of your own way? Paul says these words. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, Paul says, I don't understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. I have the will to do good. I really want to do good, he says. But what I hate, that I do. He says, if then I do what I will not to do, what I don't want to do, I agree with the law that it is good, but now it is no longer I who do it. But Paul says, it's sin that dwells in me. You see, when we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit came to live within you. But living in you means that in order to get around on this earth, I got to function through this body of flesh. Every sin that's committed is committed by the members of this body. Every sin that's committed is committed by the members of this body. When Christ came and died, rose again, he gave life, and that life is in you and I. This coat that I have on, this coat can't do anything. Coat can't do nothing. Coat is dead has no strength at all, can't do nothing. 
I don't care if what it wanted to do, whatever it thought it could do, if it had a mind, it can't do it. But the very moment that life puts this coat on, this coat can do anything that life can do. Your body is the temple of the living God. Your flesh is dead, but in you dwells the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit that is in you gives you the power to do anything and everything that you believe you can do through Christ Jesus. Can do anything in and of yourself. But when I, this coat can go wherever I want to go. Coat can do what I want it to do, move how I want it to move. Why? The coat has submitted to me. The coat is in submission to me. It's not trying to go over there and I'm going around the coat and say, okay, I'm alive now. You are alive because of the Christ in you, the hope of glory. Look at what the Word of God says here. He says here in 18, For I know that in me is for I know that in me, that is, he's saying, in my flesh. See, in this coat, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. I, I want to do it. Man, I, I want to do how many good things have you wanted to do? How many of the right things have crossed you knew you should do? But you didn't do it. Look at what he says here. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. See, in this flesh, for the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Why? Because the flesh only wants to do what it wants to do. And ever since Adam rebelled in the garden, sin came in. Are you walking with me? Look at what he says here. He says, for the good that I will to do, I do not do. For the evil, I will not to do that. He says, I practice it. He says, now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. You see, just because you are saved does not mean that you don't have to deal with the sin that dwells in the flesh. You see, sin, listen to me closely, sin is a problem of the flesh. Sin is not a problem of the spirit that is in you. But the Holy Spirit that is in you has and can empower you to overcome the flesh if you turn the power on. Is the power on in your house, in God's house, is the power on. You see, there is a tremendous battle going on. It's not the people outside of you. Paul says it's the sin that dwells now, dwells, that, that, that hangs out, that remains. That, 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 that refuses to do anything else but evil. The, the, the flesh is selfish. It only wants what the flesh wants. That's it. This battle you have inside of you, this civil war, so to speak, this fight that you are are engaged in every day has nothing to do with anyone outside 
of you. It's you. It's me. It's us. And many don't want to admit that. You see, your flesh can't do enough good to appease God. Your flesh is going back to from where it come, the dirt. And if you don't believe what the power of God can do through the flesh, consider what it did through Jesus. See, it's hard for us to really believe and accept that Jesus Christ had a fleshly body just like mine, just like yours. See, God had already sent every man he could send down through time, but they all fell short. So God said, let me come down and do this thing for myself. Let me see myself through the womb of a woman. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Let, 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 me, let me go to the cross. See, let, 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 let me die. But see, let me rise again. See, let, 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 let my son Jesus walk the earth for 33 years. Let, let me, uh, let him inform them that I'm going away to prepare a place for you. Yes, 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 but he's going to send the Father. I will pray the Father that he will send you another comforter, another of the same kind. But he's going to be with you, and he's going to be in you. And he's in you right now to everyone who's accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And he is enough. What do you mean, Tony? He's enough. He's a healer. What do you mean, Tony? He's enough. He's a way maker. What do you mean, Tony? He is enough. He is everything that you need to become all that God created you to be. You see, the Holy Spirit is not about feelings. He doesn't work on feelings. So some days you might feel like he's not there. He's there. Some days you might feel like he left you. You all alone. He's there. Some days you might feel like nothing is happening. Lord, I've been praying. Lord, I've been fasting. But ain't nothing happening. He's there in the quiet of the night. God is doing his greatest work. In the quiet of the night, God is moving in your life. The very moment you feel that I'm too weak, I can't go on. My body is tired. My head is aching, racking with pain. I just don't see how I'm going to make it. That's when God can use you. That's when he's at his best. He says, when you are weak, I am strong. God is looking for some weak people. He's looking for some people who will submit to his will is the power on in your house. You see, there are many homes around the world today. The power, they're connected to the power company, but they didn't pay the bill. So they can flip the switches and the power does not come on. When the Holy Spirit God made a decision to indwell you. He came with his own power. He is your power source. Whatever you need, whatever you believe, whatever you think 
you can do. You see, God glorifies or manifests himself to the world through your ideas, through your thoughts. What demands are you making on God today so that he can work mightily through you? Ladies and gentlemen, you have to ask yourself a question. Is the power on in God's house? You are God's house. Is the power on in God's house? Look at Galatians right quick before we close. Look at Galatians. He asked us to do something. Galatians chapter 5, he asks us to do something here, all right? He says here, I say then, walk in the Spirit. And you, yes you, you all who I'm speaking to today, shall not, he didn't say might not, shall not fulfill the lust of, of the flesh. This battle that's going on in you, it is constant. But if you make a decision to walk in the Spirit, what does he mean by walking in the Spirit? Well, what he means here is this, is that you do everything that you can do to please God in your daily life. That you make a decision, then by the act of your will, don't try to do it yourself. Submit to the power of the Holy Spirit, just as this jacket has submitted to me. Everything that I do, the jacket can do. Why? Because life is in this jacket through me. What does that say about you? I am the source for this jacket. You, whether you believe it or not, you can do exactly what your source can do. Who is your source? God the Father. How do you uh, uh, begin to do by asking him or by, yes, asking him to come into your life by submitting everything, all of you to him. And then when he comes in, the Holy Spirit to indwell you for how long? Forever. Then submit to that. You may be dealing with some tough things in this life. You're going to deal with some tough things in this life. It's called life. We live in a sin-filled world, ladies and gentlemen. And as long as you are here on this earth, you're going to run into problems. But thanks be unto God that he made a way. That he made a way when you felt and feel there is no way. When it looks like the road up ahead, it looks like all the trees have fallen in the road and they're blocking the way. It looks like buildings have fallen as we look around the world and we see the effects of the storm. Don't you know that God has made a way? Because in those areas, there are some believers that live there. And God is making a way for them. We can't always see what God is doing. But I promise you, he's doing something. And everything that God does on this earth, he does through you and others like you. And we call you believers, children of the living God. You may not feel like the Holy Spirit is present, that he's in you. But Jesus wouldn't tell you a lie. He is there, 
And since he doesn't operate off of feelings, he operates off of the truth of the Word of God. He is present when you don't even see anything happening because he's so far ahead of you and me working things out. But by faith, by faith, if you believe, the Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence, see that means something you're going to be able to see. And the evidence, we can't see the substance, we can't see the thought, but that thought will become the evidence of things hoped for. What are you hoping for today? If the light, the power is on in God's house, and you and I are being obedient to His will, Count it done. Count it done. Go ahead and praise him now. Don't wait till you see it. That ain't faith. That's waiting till I see it. God bless you this morning. May heaven continue to smile upon you. May you continue to keep on keeping on. And I know you will. If there are any today who are out of the ark of safety, and you know today is the day that you need to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. You may do so at this time. You may do so by asking God or sharing with Him, Lord, forgive me of my sins, saying these words, I accept your Son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Teach me how to be the man, the woman, the little boy, the little girl that you created me to be. I've done wrong. I don't even want to uh, uh, say how much wrong I've done, God, because you already know. I might not tell y'all of it. But since you know, come on into my life. My heart is open. I believe in my heart, and I make the confession with my mouth, Father. If you share that with him, man, you saved. The Holy Spirit has come in right then. You don't have to tarry for this. I'm trying to tell you. He's coming in when you open the door. He said him and the Father would sit down and they would sup with you. See, they're going to tell you, share with you, and show you all that they've created you to be.